This is an SMD solder practice board. I think this is probably the third video sort of on this. I did a KiCad video talking about design thoughts, how I decide to lay out a board. So that was just a, it wasn't specifically about the board, but using this one to demonstrate it. Then I did another video just recently after I got this back talking about all the other PCBs that I make and kind of a comparison. So this was in there as well. This one is going to be a little bit on the, the soldering uh, of this up. It's not going to be completely step by step, but it's just, you know, here's me doing a thing and a couple thoughts along the way. Uh, now, the reason for this board, it is one, yes, for SMD solder practice. So we've got NPN resistors, tiny down here, 0805 resistors in here, that sort of thing, um, Cree LEDs down here, and a lot of different pads to solder wires to. So I, in, I intentionally broke some pathways so that people would have to solder a wire from one thing to the other because that's a thing that you have to do. Specifically, which is the second part of this board, in the construction, the fabrication, the, the building of these high-speed race drones. So there are, here's some, some dirty ones, but you know, there's, they're like this, right? So what I did is I have an Arduino in the center here. So this is an Arduino Pro, Pro Micro. I kind of want to talk about that as well. And then I arranged, not the motors, I know it looks like it, but these are just three LEDs right here. And I numbered them the same way that you would find the motors on a drone. So it's motor one, M1, M2, M3, M4. Pretty much the dumbest pattern that you could probably come up with, that's the way they are. It's a backwards N. One, two, three, four, okay? The intent um, in the design theory, I was talking about this, design theory, the design thoughts, what the hell ever you want to call the video. Um, you know, you start laying the board out and then I had a cute little idea that, you, that I think is probably kind of neat that you put the three LEDs right here. Originally, I think it was just going to be two, but I thought if I put three here, then with the Arduino, we can program this to make the lights blink in a pattern that's kind of like the propellers moving. So I think that's that's pretty cool and cute and whatever. Um, it also causes us to, to get to write a, a little bit more code, all right? So that's what's going on here. Um, and then a, uh, a five volt regulator, 7805 coming in here, main power coming in as well, okay? So I wanted to talk about the, the putting this together, but then I also, uh, today I was just doing some soldering. So here's another one that's already got an Arduino stuffed on it. Here is another board I'm working on. There is somewhere around here, there is a more, oh, here it is, a more complete one. This is a board for a, a, um, a six axis robot control arm. Okay, so, so various different things going out to the different servo motors, but also you see they have footprints for the Pro Micros. My thought on this, the reason I'm telling you this right now, is there are many times that I want to make a board and I could just go get some flavor of Atmel chip or something like that on the STM32, um, the ARM Cortex processors, those are getting pretty popular as well, and just slap that on the board. But then sometimes I don't want to deal with all the rest of the stuff that's all in, on here. Um, it's great exercise, good to do, definitely what you should do if it's gonna be a professional board, something that you're gonna sell, right? But this wheel is already built. So I made a footprint and I reuse it, as you can see, on a lot of different boards that I make. And so this, this was a call. For a while, so this is an Arduino Pro Micro. I was using Pro Minis for the longest time. Um, they they basically, it's the same thing essentially, but it doesn't have the USB port right here. It's the same footprint, same size, right? More or less. Uh, but this is a lot easier for any other user because you don't have to have the special programming cable that you would for the, the Pro Minis, okay? So then I've gravitated back towards this and, and so I'm sticking with that. So that's that's just my first thought there. If you're doing a lot of things like this, pick one of these these things, you know, whichever the one is that you like, and then just keep reusing it, even though maybe a different one might be slightly better or a little bit better or marginally better, you know, may, maybe that's a, that's an easier thing to go with, you see? And then you have the footprint already built because that's, that's almost the main deal right there. I've got the footprint 
in KiCad. All I have to do is slap it in there. I don't have to go, oh, you know what? Um, an, an at mega or something would be better. Um, let's go make a footprint for that. So then that's the forward for this, what it is, what we're doing, right? Now, what I want to do next is, uh, yes, show you kind of what I'm doing here, but I want to break these videos up a little bit and focus on individual components. So this video, I want to talk about how to solder up one of these pro micros and get it into the board here. So solder practice, right? So I'm going to set this aside for now and um, bring this one out here to show you. This is what our goal is. So we want to get this on here. You want to have it nice and flush to, to the board itself and on the back side, nice and clean and, you know, relatively, well, we'll talk about this, you know, short little stumps sticking out here. Okay. So we'll grab our little pouch and get this thing out of here. None of this is very difficult, really, but you know, that's all relative because it depends upon how much solder practice you have. So you got to put this little foot on, or you got to put this little header in here, and then you got to put this one in here. And now here lies the problem. This is where, where most people get kind of kind of messed up, is I'm trying to hold all this, and I'm being kind of a little bit stupid on purpose here, right? You know, trying to hold it nice and straight in place. These pins right here, they can't be pinched in like this because it's not going to fit in the holes. And, you know, it can't be like this. So they have to be nice and flat and straight. So how do we do that? Now, um, if you were doing this on a breadboard, which I don't, oh, well, here's one, right? Something like this. One common thing to do is stuff it into the board with these headers, you know, in, in, into the board uh, to use them as kind of a guide to hold them straight while you solder. But if you don't have that, that's not around here. You just don't want to use it. Um, what can you do? So. We'll take this, set this down. It, you don't necessarily have to have both in at the same time because that might actually cause you problems. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this, but if you press on it and you press, you know, I'm kind of pushing on the pins here. It's not, they're not real sharp. So I'm pushing on it and you can feel when it goes flat and also kind of take a look at it from the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder just one pin right here to anchor it. Then that way, if, if I end up slipping a little bit and it goes a little bit crooked, then I can just desolder that one, hold the iron on it, get this to line up straight, and then and uh, you know take the iron away, and then it will solidify. All right. The thing you don't want to do. How about a couple things that you don't want to do? You don't want to hold it right here because if you hold it right here, as I solder this right there, this is going to heat up really fast, and you're going to burn your finger and you're going to scream and cry and you're going to move your hand and wiggle this and make it go crooked. So that's, that's kind of the problem. So we're going to start with just the first one and see if that's positioned okay. And then if, if that seems good, then maybe we'll even tack it down on the one on the other end. And then again, the nice thing here is after they're tacked in place, even if it's a kind of a blobby or icky or bad looking solder joint, you can go through and solder the rest of them fairly comfortably and make them nice and clean and then re-solder the end ones that you started with. Okay. Now, the other thing that I don't want you to do is if you push on these things very hard, the headers, they're not glued in here or anything. They're just set in this plastic. And so I can push this through and then they won't be even. Okay. So, so be mindful of that as well. Now, I think before we start any solder training, probably the thing we have to talk about first is flux. And this seems to be kind of a, a pretty big point of contention for some people. And so let me give you kind of the, the whole overall picture of this, okay? And as usual, the smallest thing, all things seem to be a lot more detail than you want them or expect them to be, okay? So here's some paste flux. Here is, it's also basically paste, but it's in a syringe. You can squirt it out. This is great from Amtech. And then there are, there's also, this is solder itself, right? And so inside the solder, there is a fine um, vein of flux inside here. So flux, the, the real goopy, runny 
flux tends to run all over the place. This syringe flux, this is great, but you have to squirt it on here like this, and that's maybe uh, a little messier than you want it to be. I mean, that's not the hugest of deal, but I feel like as you squirt it out here, more comes out than you need in all situations. So this ends up being maybe a little bit wasteful. Maybe, you decide. Then they also have, which I was looking for, and I can't find one around here either, but they have these solder pens. Sorry, it's a flux pen. And if you know paint pens, you know, they're, okay, here's a little brush for cleanup, but you know, it's about this size or so, and you just shake it up and uh, like a paint pen, right? And you push the tip and it allows it to run out and saturate the tip and then you could just paint it on. And those, uh, when those came out, I thought, hey, that is, that's great, right? And so I used those for years. Um, but one of the problems is that with the organic flux, so here's an, another new word to throw in here. With the organic flux, it's it's basically tree pitch, right? It's 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 um, you can even buy the, the like like a almost like a shellac. It's it's the amber of sorts, and you can put it in alcohol. You can make your own, right? So run down that rabbit hole if you want to. Anyways, if you're a kid once upon a time, if if that might have been the case, and you possibly climbed a tree and you got pitch all over your hands, you know how hard that is to get. Off. You try to wipe it and wash it, and it's kind of there until your skin runs away or wears out. The flux can be that way as well, and when it comes to cleaning up the board, it's also that way. Now, here's the other point, is the organic flux burns. We'll talk about this more along the way. If you're soldering this and you burn the flux, organic compounds burn down to carbon, right? And carbon is conductive. Can you see the problem here? So as you're soldering these small little, I mean, this is not even, even that small, but you're soldering your wires here. There's not much of a gap between each one of these. If you get some burnt flux in between these joints right here, you have a high likelihood that you're going to create some kind of conductivity between here. Your, um, a lot of your resistors and things like that are just pretty much that same thing. Some carbon inside there of various different degrees, amounts, dispersion that create a certain amount of resistance. So if you had, say, a power right next to a ground, which is frequently the case, that's going to be a big problem. Okay, so conductivity, burning down to carbon, and cleanup, right? Most of the time, the flux inside of the solder, all that I've seen is that organic type, and you're going to get this burnt residue. Here's, here's another um, uh, correlation to this. Have you ever had to season a cast iron skillet, or have you ever burned oil a little bit onto a skillet before and, and tried to clean it off? This is what you get, right? That's the problem here, okay? Now, this is more of a synthetic, and I got this years ago because it was cheap. I needed a whole bunch and I thought I would just get this and it would be fine and good enough. You know, I figured it was kind of cheap. Turns out it's actually really great. And you'll see this more when I go to clean up, but it, it, uh, it, it doesn't burn into a, a hard resin. It pretty much stays in its same form. And then when we use our cleanup brush here with a little bit of some IPA isopropyl alcohol, it is much easier to come off. The other thing I like about this is being red. For anybody new to soldering, it's pretty obvious that you've got a messy board. This stuff here, by the, you know, it looks kind of yellowish right now, but when you squirt it onto the board, it's mostly clear, and you can clean it up, and it looks like you did a good job, but you might not have. So there's another reason to use this. Okay. Now, what is it for? What do we use this stuff for? So simply, a lot of times people say it helps the solder flow better, right? That, that you, you could say that for sure, right? But here's, here's, here's more about this because there's, there's a handful of things that this stuff does. The, the, the flux is corrosive to the metal. Now that sounds bad and it is bad, but corrosive, lye is corrosive to your skin, but we have it in soap, right? So, so 
if you were to take this and set it on the metal and leave it there for a long time, it's going to start eating away the metal. And, and that's a problem. So that's why we need to clean it up. But if you just take some and you put it on right now, then um, what it's going to do is it's going to clean that. It's going to help clean that pad. And if the pad is clean, if the pad you're going to solder to is clean and free of oil and any kind of other garbage on there, it's going to help the solder flow better. Okay. If this was water, when we are doing composite, so there's some composite, okay, I don't know if I got a lot of them, but anyway, I've been doing composite stuff for a long time too. We talk about hydrophobic uh, surfaces, right? So a hydrophobic surface means that if you drip some water on it, it wants to get away from it. So it's, it's like uh, if you ever put rain -X on your windshield or you, know, you got wax on something, the water beads up, so it's becoming hydrophobic. You don't want that concept with solder on here. You don't want the solder trying to get away. So if you clean the pad up with the flux, it's going to want to lay out on the pad better. It won't be trying to get away as much. All right. Here's another part of why it's good. You put the flux in here and when you apply the solder, when you apply the solder to the pad, all metal exposed to oxygen is going to rust and rust is an oxide. So in the case of steel, you have an iron oxide, right? And it's very obvious because steel is, you know, steel colored and rust is orangish, reddish, right? So it becomes very obvious to us that it rusts. You have things like aluminum. Aluminum oxide is basically the same color, a little bit foggier than the aluminum itself. So you might not notice that it's been oxidized, okay? Lead, uh, tin, solder, right? This right here, this solder that you're looking at, the outside edge of this, it's, it's, I mean, it's exposed to air, so it's been oxidized, right? So that's, it doesn't have a coating on it or anything, so that happens. And, and you can't really avoid it on the outer edge, but whenever you have a molten blob of metal exposed to the environment, as, let's say, if you could zoom into that and you could see the currents inside of it swirling around, you're getting it more and more exposed to the oxygen and it's, okay, it's not quite to this degree, but imagine, you know, you're whipping oxygen into the liquid metal. You're going to get those oxides all throughout your solder joint and almost all oxides are stronger, as in more brittle, than the original metal. So if we have a, a, a solder joint, lead, tin, and we have it oxidized, this solder joint is now more brittle than the joint, it's the, you know, non-oxidized joint. Again, you can't avoid the outside getting oxidized, but at least having okay in the inside, right? And so what that means is over time, as a component on the board here wiggles around, it might start to crack the joint, right? Now, we could talk about this a lot and say, well, that little component right there, it's not wiggly. That chip right there, boy, I don't think that's going to wiggle. That probably doesn't matter. Hey, may, well, maybe that one a little bit. Oh, maybe this one a tiny little bit more. So let's do this one really good. Let's not care about that one. Let's care about this one a little bit less. Do we really want to do that? Or would you just, is it easier to me, it's easier to just say, you know what? Let's follow good practice all the time and don't worry about when it's absolutely necessary, right? So... Think about, let's see, is there a board around here? Here we go. Here's a, a robot driver board. And it's got one of these, these tall capacitors on here. This has a lot more height, you know, a little bit more weight to it. I know they don't weigh a lot, but just, just go with kind of like a relative thing here. This moment up here, it could be wiggling around back and forth. So quite frequently, capacitors like this in, in taller elements, you'll see them uh, coated with some goop down at the bottom. There's a brand name, Celastic. Um, I think they're owned by Dow Chemical now. Uh, it's, it's essentially, um, I don't want to say it's a hot glue because it's not hot glue, but you can think of it that way. So if I squirt that down, then it's going to stop this from wiggling. A lot of them, as you can see like this, they're not there. And then over time, that solder joint can crack. That's a very true fact, okay? It might be well beyond the lifetime of your product, but consider it. So here, for example, gosh, right in front of my face, see this, this, this transistor right here hanging out here. That one, if this is a board or a thing that's going to be exposed to uh, vibration and shock, 
Uh, that could even include just the fact that this thing has a case fan on it that's running all the time, causing a little bit of vibration, causing a little bit of wiggle. Over time, this thing might die. Um, how long? Well, you know, that's, I, I look at it like it might be 10, 20, 30 years, but that's why a lot of the stuff, like if you find old piece of electronics from say the, the, um, uh, the, uh, like a value village, you know, like, like the secondhand stores and they don't work. Well, it could be simply things like that, that the solder joints have cracked, um, intermittent problems. Like it works after it warms up a little bit because that crack starts to warm up and seals itself. Right? So these are the reasons why back to this, why we use the flux so we can have a really good solder joint. Okay. So then I want to explain why I'm sitting here holding a little tiny paintbrush the whole time. I think you might even see this already. I had the paste wax. I was trying to figure out well, how do I deal with this. I was using it just for tinning wires, you know, so you have a wire and you dunk it in here and you tin it and then the rest you just use the paint pen, the uh, flux pen. But then one day I thought, wait a second, I had a little paintbrush lying around. This probably would work really good. So you can just dab your paintbrush in here and you can apply it right where you want and there's no waste you can smear it all over the place get it down into the hole if you want it like that it works really good this has been my go-to for a very long time now all right i've i got this cleared out a little bit um a little bit on safety electronics soldering i mean as far as things go as far as working in shops go it's it's not that bad but consider watch out for this so here is my, my isopropyl alcohol bottle. Here is my cleanup brush. Here is the piece of paper. I should have a little bit different than this. This just happens to be a napkin because it was close that I've been working on. And so as I've been cleaning things up, this got some alcohol on it. This got some alcohol on it. This is alcohol. So uh, keep the hot thing away from the flammable stuff. That's probably one of the, the biggest things I can see happening at this level. So first off, we'll just do what I said. We're gonna stick this on here. And here is, man, I've, I've seen a lot of people say, don't do this, but I mean, it's just really inevitable. I need to hold this still. And I only have one other hand. So you make this little, you know, snake out of this thing and you grab some of this. And when I do this, see the smoke coming off? That smoke, is the flux on the inside here burning away. And by the time I get this over to here, all of that flux is now gone. So that's why we made sure to coat this, all right? Um, but the idea here is you gotta carry some over and some people say that's not good. And yeah, sure, it's not the best, but as long as you got the flux over here, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so you grab a little of this, bring it over here and just touch it to it. You're gonna get a nice little cone all around the pin. So that's pretty good, but it, it doesn't have to be good at this point. The, the thing is, make sure it's nice and straight. So this looks okay. Then if you want, you can come over here and tack in the other side because, you know, the longer this is, there's a chance that this could go a little bit crooked. Get some solder or some flux on there. Do this. So I'll set this down here and uh, now see, I, I could do the rest of them, but it's kind of hard to work at an angle. So I'll go ahead and put the other one in and do the other side. Blob. Flip it around nice and straight. Don't touch the pin. So you don't burn yourself, let it flow around. That's going to be good. Now I can set this down and I think I'll add a little bit more to all of this. I want the solder to flow down into the via, into the hole a little bit. Um, so think about solder, not only as a, a mechanism of uh, conductivity, but also a mechanical bond. We want this thing to stick well to it. We want it to be strong, not that we're putting a lot of force on it, but we want it to be strong. So 
it's it's essentially a rivet. You know, we we got a blob on the top that uh, can't pull through the hole, and then we have a little piece going down into the hole, and possibly even you know this one with the plastic, it can't really be there, but you might even have a little blob on the other side, firmly anchoring this this pin into there. Now we can do something a little bit more traditional. Now we can take this and uh, I can go ahead and solder right down the way. Clean, clean, clean. I want to show you this too if it'll focus. Um, and if I can stay still. This is a small two millimeter hoof tip for drag soldering and it has been the one that I have been using for all the drones and all the small stuff for a long time now. I do not like the sharp tip conical ones. The default one that comes with these Hakos and most soldering irons is about, what is it, about a three, four millimeter um, chisel tip. And that one's fine, it could be a little bit smaller. You could get a smaller chisel tip, but this, these, these, these hoof tips are really nice. Uh, somewhere back there I did a video on different types of solder tips. Uh, some of these hoof tips will even have a bit of a concave to help hold and, and bring a little bit of solder along with you. Kind of like an inkwell. Okay, so I get down in here and then you're going to heat the pad up and then you're going to touch the solder to the pin. So the way years and years ago that, you know, um, instructors would, you know, taught me, they said, well, what, what you do is you heat up the pin and then you touch the, the, the solder to the other side of the pin. And if you heat it up well, the solder, the pin will be so hot that it'll be able to melt it and it'll go around. I don't find that that is really the case or I have to sit on it so long that I start getting worried that I'm going to either damage the components or things like this. This is just plastic on the back here. So you're going to start melting it. So what you do is you cheat a little bit. This 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 hoof tip, you see I've got it flat. So if I turn it here, I've got it flat to the pin. I've, I've, I've turned it sideways, not flat to ground, but flat to the pin. So I bring this in and I touch it there, hold it, and then I kind of touch the solder to the tip on the side. So kind of a little cheat. And then it flows around. Okay? Then you can just keep rolling, 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 rolling. Get a little bit more on there. A bit more there. Okay. So that's the way you do that. And now if you have, oh my God, look at that one right there. So if you have these blobby ones, then you come back by here and just grab it and just take some away. Clean the tip off really good and just come back and get it again and get it again until it cleans up. Now, the more you touch this without there being flux, if you start to burn the flux away, watch for it to be kind of um, a little bit on the grayish side or just kind of different. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll say it's like mashed potatoes. It's <laughs> you, you solder and then when you pull away, a little peak comes out, like more like, you know, like an ice cream cone, you know, that as you solder it pulls away. Put some flux on it. Just dab some flux on here. Do it again. All will be fine. Okay, so those are those are pretty okay. Turn it around. Do the same for the other side. Uh, heat up. Touch the tip. Let's turn this a little bit so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. There we go. Solder. Um, notice, I guess, you know what I'm doing with my hand here? I'm kind of holding the board at the same time. Make sure you, you feed in enough, have enough uh, solder in your hand to keep going like that. So that's, that's, that's pretty okay. So I look at them from the side. I look at them from the other side. Make sure it's wrapped all the way around. All looks pretty good. Some of these end ones, the starter ones, I'll redo those. That one. Didn't seem to go so good. It's honestly, it's fine. I'm just being picky. There we go. Okay. So that's it. Now with these, I uh, don't need to do any trimming. I think they're short enough. It's fine. If you wanted to, you could get in there and try to clip those things down. I'm going to leave it as is. Then if you want to check your work, come here. So here on the board, 
is the spot where it's going to go, the direction, right? And then this should fit right in there like that. Now next is the cleanup. So I'm gonna put this here. Uh, they sell uh, four by fours and different types of, you know, Kim wipes. Get those. This is, like I said, this is just what I had laying around. This is just a, a, a napkin. They're horrible. They uh, they fray and, and it gets crap all over your, your stuff, right? Then uh, this, let's zoom out a little bit. These dispensers are really nice to have. So you take this. And as you press it, it's a little fountain, so it'll, it'll squirt the alcohol up, and then you can come down here and start cleaning away. Wipe it off on the towel, and then come up here, grab some more, da 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 come back here, da 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 okay? So I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to put it kind of off camera for a time being. I, I've seen a lot of people do this. They go to clean it, and they just kind of, there we go. Sorry, I cheated. They just sort of wipe it like that and call it good. What you got to make sure that you understand is the alcohol doesn't make flux disappear. It just liquefies it more, you know? And so pretty much think that you're picking it up with your brush. Uh, by the way, they do have PCB cleaner, so that's a thing you could get as well. But the, the, the concept is exactly the same. You're going to get this brush, you're going to clean it all off, and imagine you just picked it up with it and you wipe it. This is why the red is good. You can see that there was, was flux there. Uh, if it was the other flux, it would be, I mean, you could tell that it's yellow, right? But then um, also get in here. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, you can't see, but I got my face right down here into the board. And I'm making sure that there is no uh, rings around here. Because what you'll find is with the organic flux, you'll see little rings of burnt around there. And yes, I know I said that this was not organic but the stuff inside here is. And so that inevitably is getting on here. But when we, um, well, it's inevitably getting on there. So make sure that's all clean. And even though it looks clean, I still kind of come back by and I just keep wiping it until if I find a good spot over here, it's not coming off, it's not pulling any more red out of there, okay? Now, I can't do this with the, okay, well, I'll do it. But, I mean, uh, what you can do also is you can take the Kim wipes and you can lay it over. And this is great, except these will kind of get gooped up. You take it and you push down on it like this. And so you're using this now um, as a stippling brush. If Again, if this was composites, we're, we're poking this into it. And we're getting it, the napkin, the Kim wipe, let's say, to soak it up, but you see how I'm, I'm tearing this all to pieces. Stupid. Um, you want this clean, 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 clean. All right. We'll do the other side. I, I feel like um, there's things that I figure out <laughs> in life that... Um, you know, I normally, I don't, I wouldn't say I, I, I buy, you know, defaults cut corners, right? But I quite frequently listen to people tell me things and you're like, mm, yeah, I don't know if that matters so much. Let's try doing it without it and see if it matters, right? Um, and maybe it doesn't seem like it actually matters. Except then after you do something for a long time or you do multiple of these said things, all of a sudden you start to find out that, oh, yeah, it does actually matter, but just not initially. Down the road it does. So... This does. This does. You have to get these things cleaned. We have seen, we have seen on drones, on the main power, we'd seen what looked to be like parts sizzling. So immediately you pull the battery out and you're like, whoa, 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 I think we just burned up the board. And so you look, you look, you look, and everything looks good. Everything seems fine. So you plug it back in and it starts smoking again. But, but in this one, you know, particular instance, I stared at it a little bit longer and you could see that uh, it's hard to describe on this board right here, but you could see the part that was sizzling was not any component. There was not a component in this sizzling path that was, was there to be burning. And so what I saw, what was happening was it was frying a little strip 
of flux, literally right in front of my face, the flux was being conductive like a resistor and it was overheating and that's what was burning. Cleaned the whole board up and then everything worked fine. Okay, great, that's good. Um, also, consider, consider. I guess this is just, just non-stop harping on cleanliness and, and, and you know, flux and all of that, but um, you have a lot of electrical components, electronic components that are used in some type of switching. You know, this is a microcontroller and it's pretty much nothing but turning something off and on and off and on and sending pulses. These pulses have rises and falls. You know, typically it's supposed to be most things, you know, digital are going to be a square wave, up, down, up, down, up, down, and up, down. And, um, you know, I'll say turn a thing on, turn a thing off. Uh, with flux residue, it can leave behind, it can create kind of, um, look this up, an RC circuit. It can create a little bit, uh, there can be some capacitance built up inside the circuit. And if it can't dissipate or it's going somewhere else because of that resistive path, then you're going to actually have um, switching problems, which means, you know, the motor freaks out. The lights blink off and on when they're not supposed to. The board suddenly reboots, right? That's a thing that could happen. You could have it shorted out to a reset a little bit and all of a sudden that triggers the reset pin and then it reboots and comes back up and you wonder how come your, your device keeps turning off and on. So we'll go ahead and leave this one just as is. So this video was more about soldering and technique more than anything to do with actually getting the board done. We did, of course, yes, get our Arduino, the pins on our Arduino. And, and this is a good starting point because through hole, it's, it's, a, it's a good warm up to, you know, what, the, what, what you're doing here before we jump into some of these smaller components. Now, before you were inclined to go ahead and mash this in here because it does fit and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and solder this on here. Do not do that yet because we have a couple more components right here that we're going to get to later. All right. So next video.